Hello and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Tuesday, December the 15th. I'm Eric Wilkinson and yes, you very well may recognize me as the Wolfman. Yes, you might recognize me today because I'm not so much in the dark. But uh, from mainstream media, I used to do economic data, geopolitical environments and how that comes in to impact the markets with some of my market analysis. And I'm going to do the same thing for you folks in these daily market commentaries. Hey, wait, but I'll go a little bit further. I'm going to talk about these option strategies I'm implementing into my portfolio in order to increase the overall yield. For you all, what we've done is streamline the process to find the optimal option strategy for any given assumption. We aren't just picking option strategies out of the hat here at Pro Trader Strategies. What we're doing is you come up with an assumption and what I do is created a guideline for you guys to follow in order to find the best strategy for any given assumption, all right? And we aren't just, like I said, going with directional assumptions, picking the basic buy calls, bearish assumption, buy puts. No, what we do is we look at this underlying and see what is best suited for you and that directional assumption, all right? so. Please check that out. You can find it at protraderstrategies.com. I do go over a little bit of the details of different option components and when, where, and why we implement those into a portfolio, but I just can't give it justice like I do in the webinar. So please check those out. All right. First off, let's get on with the economic data. Across the pond, we've got Great Britain uh, unemployment rate down ticking to 4.9%, expected to be 5.1%. Last month it was 4.8%, so we could say that it did uptick a little bit, uh, but not as much as they were expecting at 5.1%. Also, we got the uh, French final CPI consumer price index coming in line with expectations at 0.2%. And then we also got here in the United States, Empire Manufacturing Index. That came in at 4.9%, expected to be 6.3%. So we're seeing that start to pull off. Uh, a lot of this could be having to do with the shutdowns, um, with the new shutdowns of COVID and or the fact that we're just not seeing the kind of demand. We've seen inventory start to rise and not really get those inventories moving. So we could be seeing the manufacturing sectors realize, hey, we need to pull back on production there other than something like a PlayStation or a, uh, a, a uh, Nintendo Xbox, or the Xbox, I should say. Uh, all right, so importer prices coming in at 0.1%, lower than the expected 0.3%. I'd like to see that. I don't want to see a lot of inflation because inflation means that they are going to increase interest rates. So if we can keep inflation low, that is a good thing. And then finally, we got capacity, uh, industrial production coming in a 0.4% expected to be 0.3%. They did revise last month's number down uh, from 1.1% to 0.9%. Capacity utilization coming in at 73.3 in line with expectations. Last month's number uh, revised up, albeit only slightly. Um, later on, we're gonna get the LEI. There we go. All right, we got it. LEI coming in at 0.8%, um, which is nice to see there. That's about it. And then we also have some uh, treasury purchases that is going to be released later on today. My boy Rick Santelli will probably be all over that. So keep your eyes out for him to be talking about that um, later on this afternoon. All right. On to the overall markets. Let's see how they're reacting to everything that's going on today. We've got crude oil moving higher, which is a bit of a bummer. I don't want to see crude oil moving higher, but it is. It looks like it's going to start eyeing that $50 a barrel. I bet almost my bottom dollar that we defend that $50. I just don't see the demand for crude oil heading into another lockdown that could possibly be more devastating to the economy than what we saw with the very first shutdown. Believe it or not, it's true. Why? Because the first shutdown, they got PPP, all right? A lot of these companies received that. We also had stimulus package. We had the unemployment uh, insurance kind of get ramped up a little bit for those people that were unemployed. All of those things created some spending, all right? And we don't have that. We don't even have a skinny package. Yeah, well, there's some rumors here and there that they're going to do it. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, we still don't have anything. They might be trying to play politics. Yes, absolutely. They're trying to play politics. There's no doubt about it. But with that being said, uh, the overall markets 
are going to struggle through this second round because those people that were kind of beat up in the first one were able to survive this time could be the uh, the death blow to a lot of small businesses, which will really hurt the overall economy going forward. Um, you know, I'm not gonna jump on a soapbox there, but you guys get my drift, right? All right, crude oil moving higher, which is a little bit strange. We've got the gold futures defending that 1800 area and bouncing off and away from that 200 day simple moving average we've been talking about making a move. Is it going to make it back into this little flagging area that I kind of drew up uh, over the weekend? I believe that, well, I hope, I hope we're going to get a stimulus package, which means that we would see gold futures start to move higher. All right, bonds unchanged, fi finding a, a little sweet spot here at the point of control, just above the 50 day simple moving average, which we have lining up right here. We've gotten above that. So starting to show a little bit of uh, maybe long-term upward trajectory in the bonds, which would create lower interest rates for us going forward. Remember, rising interest rates is going to crimp spending. And do we want spending to be crimped right now? I don't think so. Not heading into a holiday season. Keep in mind, uh, FOMC uh, coming out tomorrow. They have a two-day meeting today and tomorrow. They'll come out with their results tomorrow as well. Uh VIX is coming off because we're getting a bit of a bounce here in the equities. Yesterday, it was just all day just to the downside uh, as the day continued to progress. Uh, today, we're getting a bit of a bounce back, trying to get above the, uh, the Dow Jones nine-day simple moving average right there, but we are just shy of that. And we've got a value area high that is going to start slowing this momentum to the upside as people are going to really be interested in trying to cover some longs. All right, NASDAQ back into the trend channel after we talked about it yesterday. We pierced above it for a brief moment today, but you know I think that right now this trend channel isn't going to act as much as a resistance as this Fibonacci that we have lined up that uh, is for this uh, retracement from the COVID move. I mean, that is a massive move. Are we really doing as well as we were before the end of the year or uh, before COVID struck? I don't know. It's a little bit strange. NASDAQ, yeah, there's a bit of a um, a case for that, right? Because NASDAQ is mostly tech heavy. And if we are staying at home, that is going to be tech centric. All right. And here we go with the E-mini S&Ps up 24 on the day. But again, pretty quiet, feeling more inside-ish. Uh, from the previous day. And as you can see with the uh, E-mini S&P breakdown, we are very much an inside day as of right now, but just, you know, throughout the day, it was just more and more selling pressure uh, to right into the end of the day. Maybe a little bit of profit taking right at the end there, but for the most part, it was very bearish. Today, overnight, we got a bit of a boost and today, pretty quiet. Probably most people trying to shore up some positions, adding some hedges ahead of tomorrow's FOMC for the most part. All right, let's get on with it. Uh, the trades that I've done, well, I haven't done anything in 22nd Century Group. Something I said yesterday, and you guys, if you guys jumped on board with this trade, um, you know, like I said, this is your mad money kind of trade where less than probably even 5% of a portfolio, five to 10% of a portfolio is allocated to these alternative assets or the ones that are really risky. So you should not be allocating any more than 10% of a portfolio to very risky assets. And that being said, you shouldn't be doing 10% of your portfolio in just probably one stock that is your alternative asset, right? But having said that, to me, more and more, it feels like the uh, the, the marijuana scene is going to be uh, something that the government's going to look at and try to take advantage of these tax dollars that uh, they could uh, take in from the consumption and sale of marijuana, THC, uh, CBD, all right, all of those things. 
uh, the government really wants to get involved in, I'm sure, especially right now where they aren't getting tax revenue because everybody's unemployed, right? So they're going to be looking at different ways to uh, increase those flows. And this, this company will do very well by it. You know, at the end of the day, if this company went to zero, it's not something that would be devastating to my portfolio. And I want to make sure that you guys uh, are in on that. But this chart setup does look to be very bearish. If you are a technical analysis, in, into technical analysis, that is a bearish candle today inside day. Um, but to me, it looks like it wants to start retracing a little bit. And for me, I would look to add a little bit to that. I did a very small on this because it, it was feeling like a very much of a breakout. So if we get a bit of a retracement back into the 150s or something like that, I might be looking to add just a little bit to this trade. Um, but I want you guys to be aware of this chart setup looks very bearish at this point. All right, uh, Best Buy. Again, yesterday I talked about it. If we broke below the low that we saw on uh, last Thursday right here, which lines up with 99.60. We didn't quite get there. We just came up shy, making it look like a bit of a tweezer bottom. Uh, I was expecting us to get a, a little bit of a move to the upside today, which we are kind of getting. It's only up 60 cents, but it is off of those highs. And anytime we talk about the chart setup like this, that looks like a continuation pattern. All right. So when the charts are setting up where you have two counter opposing dojis like this, which is like a hangman doji and a spinning top doji, uh, being that a hangman doji looks similar to, let's say, a hangman doji looks like this. Um, all right. So we've gotten that one. That, to me, we were looking at that tweezer bottom from a, a, a bigger doji, right? Uh, a little bit higher actually probably was a bigger doji like that but then we kind of got that tweezer bottom um right here okay we have a red candle in there but it wasn't a confirmation or anything else on that inside of there right a uh, little bit wanky on the drawing but bear with me and then today we now have a spinning top doji okay so a spinning top doji looks like that now that combination if it were a bullish move, that would look like a continuation to the upside. But right now, this is looking more of a continuation to the downside in Best Buy if it breaks below this 99.60 area. 99.60, that's where I'm going to get out, all right? So that would be the location I'm going to be pulling the ripcord on Best Buy uh, for this trade. And then we move over to IBM. So IBM uh is a trade that i started adding on to uh or adding on to on accident really because of what came in during the uh earnings here all right so with the earnings right here on this earnings i ended up selling some august puts in there so i sold originally the august uh 120 puts 120 puts, and this was in the weeklies, all right? So I'm not going to write all of that out, but uh, sold the August 120 puts for 57 cents. Uh, for 57 cents, I'm going to say. And remember, we got the option multiplier, so we multiply by 100. I got $570 on that. But that's neither here nor there. Obviously, with this move to the downside, you can see there's the 120 put area. I uh, probably should erase that. That looks... Funny. Let me get rid of that. Um, but the uh, uh, 120 is right there. So the market gap down. I got put that stock. I immediately got mechanical with this trade and went in and sold the November 105 puts. I was looking at dollar cost averaging on this trade. I said, hey, you know what? I need to start getting aggressive here or at least mechanical. The 105 puts I, I sold on this day right there, which is the uh, the 21st. So I did it, uh, these were on the 19th, these were on the 21st. Sold the November 105 puts, dollar cost averaging on that. Thought if I got hit on those puts, I'd be happy to buy IBM at around a hundred bucks, um, you know, with the overall breakdown on cost basis, I, dollar 
credit. So this is a credit, credit, right? All right, and then about a day later, I decided, hey, you know what? I'm gonna look to get out of these longs that I have on because I'm long at 120. I ended up selling the no 120 calls. All right, so basically a covered call strategy on my longs that I know I'm gonna get stuck with here. And I did that for another dollar credit. Now, keep in mind, you, for every one lot that you do, you have to multiply this by 100. Um, but when I'm looking at it for breaking down my cost basis on the trades that I own, I'd rather look at it this way, okay? Um, it's a little bit easier to follow, I think, for, for anyone involved. So what do I have? A, dollar, a total of $2.57 credit. Now, I'm long. Now, these equal longs at 120, right? $120. So, but with all of the credits I've gotten, I can consider that being lowering my overall cost basis by $2.57 at this point, right? Well, I do have to say I covered these. Um, I got out, let's just say uh, I got out here. I got out of these for a nick, what was the uh, puts I got out for 10 cents. Got out for 10 cents, right? So I got out of these for a nickel. So I do have to take that into consideration. I did have to pay to get out of these. So that overall lowering of credit was $1.85 in my pocket, all right? So I was able to get out of these trades for about $1.85 right here in uh, November, right around in this area here is where I kind of got out of those, all right? Um, now, Time goes on. I decided to do it again. Remember, I've been talking about these December 129 calls in there. Uh, th that's the idea is when we're doing cover call strategies, we roll out in time and hire and strike if we have that opportunity. So I did the December and sold the 129 calls. I told you yesterday that I was trying to get out of these for uh, a dime and it was a little bit away. So I sold these for 73 cents credit. I got out for a dime. So let's just keep that consistent. I got out of those for a dime yesterday. Well, today I decided, why didn't I just roll those? And I, I decided to do that, just that. And I've rolled out in time and higher in strike. So now I've got on the January 135 calls, all right? If I was happy to get out of 129, I'll be more than happy to get out of 135, right? So I went into the January Let's stay consistent here. Went into the January and sold the 135 calls right in that sweet spot of theta decay. We've got the, uh, 35 days to expiration coming up. That's where theta starts, that thief in the night really starts getting aggressive. And I did this for 50 cent credit, all right? Now, I'm not following along. You guys might be saying, dude, wolf man, the volatility is super low in these uh, in this underlying. I don't really care about that at this time with this type of trade. When we're doing covered calls, we're not following the swing trade type mentality for trading options. What we're trying to do is just lower our overall cost basis on this trade. So as of right now, I am uh, I have lowered my overall cost basis on this trade. I did 85 cents uh, plus the so I'm at about a dollar fifty, so two dollars and about ten cents. Just doing math in my head, uh, from this point, uh, about two dollars and let's just call it fifty cents right there, right? So eighty-five dollar fifty fifty dot two dollars. Let's just call it two dollars. Lowered my overall cost basis on that. So synthetically, you can think of it as well. I'm long at one twenty. Now my break even on this trade is one eighteen. If uh, IBM were to start breaking down, and I'm not even including this new 50 cents that I've added in there, so overall $2.50, right? Now that's increased the spread. Not only have I been able to raise my short calls from where I'm long, I've lowered the overall cost basis on that trade, so increasing that width of that spread for the long uh, uh, stock to the short call strike. Literally, this is exactly like a book how you should be trading covered call strategies in an underlying like IBM. Remember, you guys may or may not remember, but I do. When I was in college, this is how I got involved in trading options. I had a portfolio that I'd start buying some stocks and uh, started doing covered calls on it. It gets called away from me. You start selling puts. 
Wait for it to come back for you. Now, you can look at it as lowering your overall cost basis. When I was in college, I was just like, hey, it's another dividend. You know, a better dividend than I might otherwise get. So, consistency, continuing to lower overall cost basis. Or you can think of it, hey, I'm just getting a free dividend every once in a while. If it gets called away from me, I'll start playing this game over and over and over again. So, playing this like a book. Um, th those are the trades I've done still in the long IDM still hasn't gotten called away from me, but I have had a nice run with lowering overall cost basis just in a matter of a couple of months, right? Usually you have to wait a very long time to get that $2.50 um, dividend from somebody like IBM, but I've been able to accumulate that inside of those uh, dividend days, all right? So... You can see that was, uh, or the dividends here, $1.63. So I'm able to add in all of that money to my portfolio by lowering the overall cost basis in that trade. So playing that like a fiddle, what was the other thing that I had? Um, uh, pen, pen, national, pen, trying to still continue to lower my overall cost basis on this. I have on, we had the big spike yesterday, so it looked like those things we're going to be called away from me. Remember that I am a long pin at $4.50. I've lowered my overall cost basis on this, but I do have on the December 90 calls. So I am short the DEES uh, 90 calls against my longs. You know, I'm long uh, at $4.49, right? Uh, I got long right here on down in around that area. I mean, seriously, great run, right? Uh, but I am short the December 90 calls that I uh, had sold, the, the market pushing higher, getting a little bit of volatility increasing in here. But the December 90 calls uh, is what I've done in pen. And I, I think I uh, sold those for a dollar and two cents. I'm trying to get out right now for 10 cents. Last I checked, it was trading around 30. So maybe 35. Market's kind of moving up there. Pin gets called away from me in the next four days at $90. I'll be happy to do that because I think I can do some dollar cost averaging or add it back in at around 70 or something like that. Maybe it'll come down to the 50 day simple moving average. All right, so December 90 calls, still looking to try and get out of. Only have till Friday uh, to really worry about it. And then we'll see how it goes from there. All right, that's it. That's all I got for you guys. One last thing, please take a moment to uh, check out our disclaimer as we're an educational company, everything I talk about is for educational purposes to help you guys out, know your risk, know what uh, you guys are willing to put into a portfolio, make sure that you have all of the information before you start entering trades. All right, so that's all I got for you. Other than if you can't take that, take it easy.